Hi everyone. Just bear with me two seconds. Right, where are you guys? Just getting up my chat. Good evening, Miss Paisy. <laughs> right, I'm going to move my iron because if I don't, I'll end up burning myself. And that'll, that'll be casualty in itself. Hi, Julian. Will Lady Angela be crafting this evening? No, Miss Paisley, not crafting this evening. Um, she is keeping an eye on the chat for me this evening, so she'll be with you all in the chat instead of. But I will, um, if you hear Chris talking, that's not to us or to me, in fact. Um, that is, he's got, he's talking to gaming people. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you all can hear me okay and see me okay. Um, I'll wait for a couple of few ladies to join us. I can only see two comments. I'm not hoping the comments are working. I'm just going to say something in the chat. Yeah. Right. We are making a... You know how I've been making, like, for well, me and Angie, I've been making, um, what we were calling them, and cases to put. I made a sewing case, and Angie made a case of crochet needles. Um, I'm going to be making something they can hang on the wall that you can put your sewing essentials in. Um, yes, Miss Paisley's going to be back with us next week. She's having this week off. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds for everybody to join us because it does take a couple of minutes for um, everyone to join us. I'm hoping you all can hear me okay and see me okay. Yes, I've just lost the chat now. There we are. How is everybody's day going? Is everybody's having is everybody having a real good day? I have been hi I've been having a relaxation day today. Um not doing nothing too crazy. I have been in and out of crafting and um I will share with you what I've been making if I can find it at all. Um I bought this in the week. Well, you know how I'm, I'm de-stashing? Well, I kind of re-stashed my stash. This is 900 litres of all different types of um, cotton. It's real fine cotton, which means you can crochet crochet doilies with it. Um, and it comes in like different colours. You've got baby pink, dark pink, like blue going on to uh, lilac, and like a burgundy colour right in the centre. And if I tip it this way, you can pull it from the middle and start from the middle because she's put a little heart in there. And I had that um, in the market, in the general market, but she does do it. She has got a shop and it's called Crafting Cutch. Crafting Cutch, I think it's called. I think it's called the crafting coach. I will check with you all. So I bought that and I've been making um some doilies. And like I say, if I can find them, I will show you them. So yeah, I thought that would be perfect to make some real tiny, tiny mini doilies because the cotton is super thin. And I just thought, why not? Why not if not? So bought some of that. Um, like I say, while I'm waiting for everyone to come in. I purchased some yellow yarn. This one is a little bit, that's a little bit, whereas that's cotton, this has got a bit of a texture to it. And this is, 
it's cotton, but I'm trying to figure out how many grams is on. That's not helping, not helping, not helping. I can't find out how many yeah, grams is on there. So they bought that one and I've also bought them as well. And um, this one, which is like real fine, fine um, brown. So yeah. I've had a request, Gillian. It's funny you say that. I've had a request to do some crocheting. So look out for it because um, I've got some patterns I've I've made up at the top of my head. And um, oh, I got my thing here. I had a request during the week whether I could show you guys how I've made these. And those are the ones I made out of this um i didn't follow any pattern for them they were just made up in my head but i did have a request on how i've made them so i'm going to be doing some videos um crocheting videos and show you guys how how i've come up with that pattern it's super easy and um, it's not difficult at all so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you guys how i've made them and this is only while I'm waiting for everybody to join us. I also bought, I might actually use some of this tonight actually. So that was the cotton I bought. Hello, Miss Rian. I bought some of this. Which I completely forgot I when we'd purchase. Some of this. It was only while seeing the, the spools in the bag I remembered. And that's stunning. I might actually use some on this uh, thing I'm making tonight. So, put some of that. And a metre was £5, so half a metre was £2.50. And then I bought some of this. Now, this is like 70p a metre, 75p a metre. Some of that. Some of this one. Got some of that one, and then I also got some of this one. Hi, Sarah, sweetheart. I'm just waiting for everybody to come in, and then I'll go into what I'm making and some of that. Which again, I might use some of this tonight. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep this little white bag out so I know and I remember that it's in there. Because otherwise, I did forget. Because they should have been put away through the week, and they haven't. <laughs> right. Okay. While everybody's coming. Okay, last week I mentioned that I was going to take one of your videos, and I also brought some buttons as well. I was going to take one of your videos and I was going to look around, get inspired, and then do it in my life. So, the videos that I've been inspired to make, I'll show you them in a second. The videos that I've been inspired to make now, what I'm making is a sewing holder that you can hang up. It's also portable, so um, you can, you know, carry it around with you. There's going to be pockets in there, so there's lots to do. Hi, Mom. Hi, Sarah, sweetheart. Um, so there's lots to do. So you could do any which way you want. You can use it for anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be sewing. Mine's going to be sewing because I absolutely love sewing. But you can use it to stash your makeup in. You could use it to stash your doilies, your laces in. Anything you want to stash it in, it's there. So the two videos that I'm going to take and then I'm going to make my own is um, Debbie Shaw's video. Now, she made, it was uh, the links are in the description bar below. I can't remember her, what she named it, but the link is in the description bar below. And she made what I'm going to make today. And she did some embroidery work, which is what I'm going to be doing on my new machine, which I'm so excited, excited to show you. Um, um, so, yeah, she, she did this. And then I went off to Sarah's channel in the week. Now, Sarah, I didn't comment on your video. And the reason I didn't is because I didn't want, <laughs> I will go back and comment, but I didn't want to give you the heads up that I was going to take your video for my inspiration to do my life so the video that um i saw on sarah's channel she showed a wall hanging and i actually wrote it down it's called vintage lady with umbrella 
wall hanging. The link is in the description bar below for Sarah's channel too. And the reason I'm taking Sarah's video is because I love the way she used layers to create a shabby chic effect. So I'm going to use layers, but I'm also going to do it vintage. But I'm going to keep those layers in mind and the way she worked, like doilies and she put um, appliques on so please go and check those two links out in the description bar below i will be doing more of these videos because um like i say youtube is such a big place and we all watch different things and um it's nice to share sometimes what i watch to give you an insight what i to take from those videos so sarah is sarah's shabby chic creations and Debbie Shaw is obviously Debbie Shaw on YouTube. If nobody's checked Debbie Shaw, please go over. Um, both ladies are amazing crafters, and you'll get um, inspiration from both. So, how to start this? Now, I have got underneath here, I'll explain what these layers are in a second. I have actually got a circle cutter. Now, you can buy these um, in a smaller, smaller circle cutter. You can actually buy them so that they are circled. But this one, as you'll see, it's a moon shape. It's not a circle. It does go into a circle, and I'm going to cut it in a second. So this is by Fris Friskers, and it goes from anywhere up to 2 inches to 12 inches. Now, it's the 12-inch circle is what we want to create this wall, a portable you could do it as a wall hanging it could be like a portable case whatever you want to call it but i forgot what i've titled my own video but you'll understand what i try to do now so when you buy this it comes with the actual cutter itself now the cutter's got a um some of you might have seen me use this before some of them you might not have done the cutter has got an actual protector now when you take the protector off and i'll push down you can actually see the blade which is good in a sense because it doesn't matter how many times I brush my hand across, I'm never going to catch the blade because the blade is tucked under between this spring effect. Now, it's this spring effect that gives you the circle because you end up pushing down into these gaps to give you the circle. So I'm going to show you how to cut the circle and then I'm going to tell you how many circles you actually need to cut. And I will be doing, I've got a new machine, of course I have. Um, I'm going to be showing you a couple of uh, things. So my new machine, um, you're going to be coming on a learning experience with me because the, learn, the machine itself um, is a singer machine. It's a quantum stylus singer. And it does everything. It goes from embroidery work to alphabets, to patterns, to quilting, to um, putting the a thread through the needle for you, to cutting it, to it does absolutely anything you want it to. So, but as I don't know how to do most of the things that the machine wants to tell me it does, um, every week you're going to be coming on a learning curve. Now, I have got all the feet got all the feet in here and i've got some of the feet in here and it's and all the all the gadgets that come with it now some of these feet i know i have to use and some i don't so instead of me trying to think oh shall i not do this video or oh, shall i not i'm actually going to take you on a bit of a learning you're going to be actually you're going to be uh learning with me as they say because um some of the feet like i said i don't know how to use so every week we're gonna do um a bit of a learning curve together and we're gonna see what these feet actually do and what my machine actually does because after all i want to make the most out of my machine hi marlu sweetheart i did see you coming in but i was yakking so i do apologize hi fiona so um bust the feet and the, the gadgets I will show you the machine in a second, but we need to cut our fabric. Now, this goes on the top. It's the end of the spool. I'll explain what I know so far in, in a second to you. Um, now, my fabric, before anybody asks me, because I know I'm going to get asked. Right, you, for this, you'll need some wadding. Some of you call it batting. 
some of you call it warding depending on where you are in the world so there's my warding now all these circles are cut to 12 inches you will need two pieces of 12 inch fabric Is that your new machine class can you guys see it i think you can see the edge of it i will show you it fully in a second is it in bright yes it is marlo yeah it um it quilts embroider we actually going to do some embroidery work on it tonight for the first time <laughs> so you have to forgive me if it's not perfect but we are going to do it together <laughs> oh my goodness i'm just trying to retrain myself on my basic machine this machine sounds like it does everything amazing sarah my sweetheart i had a basic machine i've had mine for over eight years now, when I went into the sewing shop quite fairly recently because Angie kept telling me, oh, you need to look after your machine, you know that, don't you, Claire? And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, of course not. And she said, you need to buy your machine. Do I? <laughs> so I went into the sewing shop and I said, can I ask what oil do I buy for my machine? Because I didn't know that you have to keep up with the maintenance. I know about brushing it, you know, getting like the cottons and stuff up, but I didn't know about keeping up with the maintenance of the machine. So I went in and he said, what machine have you got? So I told him, now the machine I always use and that you always see me use is called a Brother LX27. And he said, can I be completely honest? I went, yeah, go for it. And he said, well, it's those type of machines that when it breaks, you have to throw out because we can't, as a manufacturer, fix it because it's a cheap machine. I said, but I've had mine for eight years. He said, well, you've had a really good one then because sometimes when you buy a cheap machine, they don't last you very long. So I'm not saying cheap machines are not going to last you long because mine's lasted eight years and it's still going. I'm just wanting a new machine because I'm, I'm feeling a bit braver with my sewing. That's the only reason. So that's the reason I got a new machine. So Sarah, sweetheart, it doesn't matter what type of machine you've got, a basic one, a foot pedal, an automatic, it really does not matter. What matters is you've given it a go and you're sitting there and you're sewing with it and you're enjoying it. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. So whether you do one piece and you you think, oh, I've done that wrong, it does not matter. What matters is the enjoyment out of getting it. And that's all that matters. If you enjoy your machine, then I would say carry on using it and you will grow to love it as much as you grow to doing your dream catchers. Brother gets a very good name. I have a P payoff sewing machine brother's absolutely excellent machine um, make of a machine like you say um i was a bit nervous going from a brother to a singer because i've never had singer machines but i'm seeming to like this machine quite a lot so i will show you in a second because everyone's asking me about the machine but we want to cut our fabric first before we get there so our wooden and our batten if you go in the description shop if you go in the description link below i've put the shop now where i get my wadding and batting is um a lady called suzanne hi suzanne sweetheart if you're watching and she is called pink scissors on the web she, i've asked her tonight because um i didn't want to mention it to you and her not be able to post overseas she will post overseas but obviously she's got to find out what the postage is but Go on to her website and you will not be disappointed. She's got anything from fabric to the wood in the batten to lining to anything you want to be able to sew. So that's where I get my wadding and my cotton from. So go on over and you, like I say, won't be disappointed. And she's really, it's a really good price as well. Um, I've just checked because I know somebody's going to ask me. I think it was nine. Oh, 90 by 40 centimeters but i can't remember the measurements exactly but it ranged from the warden range from 10 pound and then it went up to 23 pound but that's all dependent on how much warden you actually get and how much you want hi dd sweet ask your brother if mine is on it was my uncle and i will do miss dd i will do <laughs> right so <laughs> i will do so the layers you need 
one, two, three, you need four pieces of cotton. Now you could do this pattern. If you're doing a pattern one, then you will need two patterns and two cotton pieces. Um, but I'm going to decorate mine with laces and doilies and that kind of jazz. So I'm going to do it plain and then build it up from there. So you'll need four pieces of, um, right, this is like a cream cotton um, at 12 inches, two pieces of wadding at 12 inches, and then I'm going to be cutting another piece of this um, vintage lace. And I, I've got three pieces. I'm going to cut an extra one with you all today. So let's get cutting. So this is my circle cutter. Like I just said, we need to place our blade right on the edge and the blade will find the edge for you. Now, if you notice on this board, if I move up because I want to be in shot, there's a cross. Now, this line going across, let me lift this up because I haven't explained this bit. So what I've done with my fabric first off is I folded it. This is how you get your circle. So fold your fabric over, and now you've got a um, fold line for your fabric. This fold line is what you need to meet up with your circle cutter. So the line going across needs to be on the fold line of your fabric. Then take your cutter, and we're gonna go into a 12 inches. Like I say, it will find it for you. Just give it a bit of that. Hold it down. Now we're going on the furthest line out. Mind your fingers, I would say. And then just go ahead and cut it. Now you're going to have to put some little bit of pressure. Right. And if I lift that, we should be able to cut away. Now you might find... I move the circle cutter away. Might find that you just need to snip the edges. That's okay. I'm not going to take the circle cutter again because I've done that before. And I've had two um, lines. And there's our circle, and that's as easy as you could use. I can use that tool cut as I have no rotation in my wrist for my mobility. Yes, you could use it, Malu. I know what you're trying to say to me because you can't turn your wrist. Yeah, you could. So, if you can't turn your wrist, this is how I would do it, and it's just sometimes how I normally do it: is fold your you fold your fabric like so, right? Bear in mind now, this is just one piece. I'm not going to cut it again, otherwise I'll end up with two circles. Make sure you've got you're on your cutting board. You don't want to be on glass board or um, wood or anything like that because the blade will actually go through it. And instead of turning your wrist, bring your blade on the end. Where am I? There. Go up as far as you can go up. Then lift the mat that you're cutting on. And rotate the mat and then go up and then do it that way there's a there's a way with everything so just keep turning it until you've done it you don't have to do it in one complete um guide as long as you turn in your mat and not your cutter you won't lose where you've just cut and you won't the fabric won't move either hope that's helped a little bit for you anyway <laughs> Dee Dee, I am laughing at your comments. Right, I'm going to lift that up. So that will be our fourth piece of um, cotton. So we have, I'm going to cut another piece of lace in a second. We have one, two, three, four. There's our four pieces. We have two pieces of our wooden. We have three pieces of our lace. And I'm going to cut another piece. And then that's all our pieces we need at the moment. 
So if I lay that on there with my pin on. Wait, oh, that's a great idea. Thank you, Kurt. My husband has to use my rotary cutter for me to cut my fabrics because I'm not very strong on my hands. There's not, I yeah, I thought, you know, as I was explaining it, because sometimes I just struggle with my wrists. Um, I do have my, my hands swell up. So when you when you just said that, I was thinking, oh, how do I do it sometimes? And the way I do it is I turn, even when I'm cutting, you know when you cut fabric and you get the guillotine out? Well, sometimes I'll turn the mat instead of trying to um, try and turn the um, but, you know, the cutter. Right, I'm going to cut this down now all the way. I could use the circle cutter to do this. I'm going to turn it all the way around. And again. And this is all the pieces that you need. And you think 12 inches, whoa, that's too big. But you don't have to make it 12 inches. You could make it smaller. Um, if you haven't got a um, uh, one of those tools, you could use a plate. Anything that's circle and mark it out with, a, with a, one of those pens. You know, like uh, what they call them, a fabric um what they call them fabric pens you know the one i'm on about when i filmed um with rian this week rian said rian was trying to think of what this charm was called and i turned around to her and said you're in clax craft room now you don't have to think the proper words for things and she started laughing right so four pieces of lace two wadded and two of our cotton so the first thing we're going to do is put our lace to the side because we don't need that for the minute and we don't need our warden for the sec for the minute what we do need is to start building our our um our pieces so and i'm going to embroider on one of them as well so what we're going to do is is it's going to be our back piece is first of all is i'm going to make um i don't want to do a silly glue hi carla sweetheart Oops. and you could use fusible fleece if you want to go wad in Right, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the back piece because the front piece is a bit, um, needs a little bit more attention. The back piece is a bit easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my piece inside out and then iron it down. So, wadding down first, then the cotton on top of that. And I'm going to put some pins in. So let me get my pins out because I completely forgot I need them. Okay. Right, we need to leave a gap as well because we've got to turn this inside out. Um, and I'm going to take you over to my new machine. Ah. I love the pockets. Well, if you, um, if those who don't know what I'm going on about, um, Mrs. G, who's Rian lives what would you say we are about five minutes away from me and once a week we meet up and um and you know if i haven't got too much on we meet up and anyway we she came over and she said oh i got a surprise for you and i went what's that <laughs> and she said well i said i got a surprise for you so can you do my surprise because i was like jumping up and down <laughs> like a child and she went, okay, I'll do your surprise. So anyway, she came over 
and um, I said, right, my surprise is your entry. I said, should we film it? She went, oh, I don't know about filming it, I don't know about filming it. So anyway, we filmed it, and it's on Rian's channel. So go over to Rian's channel, who is Mrs. G, and you will see the video. And next week, we're going to be doing um, a video together, and we're going to be making flowers on Rian's channel. So that should be fun. So what I've done is I've, if you notice, I've left a gap. That gap is our gap to turn it inside out because we're going to turn it inside out and this is going to be our back piece. Like I say, the front piece needs a bit more attention. So I'm not bothered by it at the moment. Um, but what I will do while I got that piece on. See, the lace is going to go on top. But what I might do, just to give this a bit of um, a bit of effect, is when the pieces together, is I might go around with it on pink stitching, and might do it really small, just to give it a little bit of um, what should I call it, delicate stitch. Right, let me show you my machine. Move my pins on my way. So first of all, we um. I have, I'm going to do the embroidered piece in pink. So if you are doing anything embroidered on your machine, have a think about, have a look at your machine if you've got an embroidered one. Um, I've had a look and I'm going to be doing a leaf on my, but I'm going to be doing it in pink because I want to do a nice flower in the centre. So the leaves are going to come out each side. That's the idea. So what I did, I've been practicing today about the width and the height and where I wanted my leaves to go. So have a half an hour before you start your project. When you've cut out all your pieces, have, sit and have half an hour and think, right, what piece do I want to, to embroider? And how small or how big do I want that embroidered piece to be? So this is what I've been practicing today. So I'm hoping you can see that. I thought I heard a cat meow. Do you have a cat, Claire? Or was it your dogs? No, uh, Malu, I do have a cat. I've actually three. And um, if you will, if you uh, were listening to Mrs. G's channel, um, it was Malu. Malu. No, it wasn't Malu. <laughs> I was just going to say it was Malu going on Rian's shoulder. No, it wasn't Malu. It was Marley. <laughs> I do apologise, Marlou, because I'm reading your comments. <laughs> Please forgive me. Oh, gosh. Right. I'm going to bring this out. And I'm going to post it. So this is the machine. No, that's not wrong. Give me a sec. Um, ah, that's better. Wait a sec, let it catch up. There, that's better. Now you can see the machine. Let me have a look at the, what you can actually see. Oh, thank you, Carla, sweetheart. There, you can see the machine. Brilliant. So, as you can see, you can see some, well, you can see most of the patterns. I'm hoping you can see most of the patterns. If I just bring you up a tad, you can see most of the patterns on the top. There we are. Um, so of this machine, um, there's over eight, 800, I believe, um, machines, machines, stitches. There's over 800, but only... Hundreds, well, there's 800 things, I think. I'm not sure. I'm still learning. So if I say something and then I'll correct myself, it's because I'm still learning about it, right? So what on the top, it gives you um, 116 stitching, and you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You've got 13 different old buttonholes to make your buttonholes. All these different patterns. You've also got straight stitch. It does quilting, it does embroidery. So we're going to be doing a bit of embroidery tonight. But what I wanted to show you, I didn't want to just show the machine off. What I wanted to show you was, I'm going to be doing a straight stitch tonight. So what I've done is 
on this is this is a little screen that tells me a couple of things which is what i've learned so far so this section here tells me what stitch i'm actually doing and i don't know when, yeah you can you can they these are the three buttons so if i click on the middle button it gives me all those patterns you see up the top and then i can choose what pattern i want to pick so if i go back up to number one and press that that's the stitch that we're going to press then this one like you say some of them i'm still learning so this one tells you the length of the stitch so what i've done is this is the length and that's the width what i've done is you can um you can make your length yeah. bigger or you can make it smaller you can make your width bigger or you can make it smaller so totally up to you what you wanted to do so i'm going to go back so now you've set all that up uh, this allows me for the speed this is a automatic but i have got a pedal so if i wanted to personally do it manually i could that is the option too this is an automatic machine um so this little slider i can have it going super fast or i can have it going super slow so to give you an idea i'm going to put the foot down just to give you an idea of the speed let me just put it right straight up i'm going to press this start and press that stop now as you can see that sounded really quick and i'm going to press this to cut it lift the foot back up that is it super fast because it does go really fast but because i'm a bit wary about how fast it actually goes i'm going to take my speed down to about there so it's like midway so if i click my foot's now down if i click start it's really quiet as well that's how slow it goes i click stop and then i'll click cut it cuts the thread for me lifts the foot up and that's my work so that is how i'm gonna so tonight so that is that the machine so like you say play about if you've got a, mach an, a machine that you're not wary of whether it's manual i know i've got an automatic one but i have been using a manual one um so play about with the stitches that's why i did and that's how i learned um what my machine actually does because when you have um, a machine you want to be able to it when enjoy it you don't want to be having a machine and think it's too overwhelming it's too stressful to use and put it away you want to be able to enjoy it so what i'm going to do is i am going to sew this now so my wadding is on the outside and my two fabrics are set together because we're going to turn this bad boy out so i'm going to bring you just down so i'm hoping you're going to be able to see me stitch so I'll let the picture catch up and i'll read some comments out before i go ahead and it cuts the thread falls off my yes miss Didi, it cuts the thread and it threads the um thread through the needle that's me showing up just to touch <laughs> i'm so excited i needed to show you <laughs> you needed to agree to operate that clip i am learning i'm not letting it get to me because it can it can become quite overwhelming when you have a machine like this and you think it you know it's too overwhelming i'm going to put it away I'm not never going to use it and it can become that so what i've decided to do because i don't want this machine to overwhelm me i want to be able to still enjoy it um is i'm learning a little by little and what i'm going to be doing each week is we're going to be learning the the foots together so each week when i do a project i'm going to get a different foot out and i'm going to show you what i've learned with that foot because each machine whatever machine you buy they will all have the same amount of feet and the feet are the little metal thing that operates um what stitch or what you can do on your machine um so you can take the feet off so if i press the black button this is the feet that's the feet i'm using that's the foot i'm using and it also tells me on here which is again what i've learned today it tells me what foot i need to use some machines um you'll need your manual to tell you that um so it's completely how to uh, you know completely what machine you've got 
Um, but a manual will definitely tell you what foot to use for what you want to be able to use. So say you wanted to use a button and you want to do a buttonhole, um, go into your manual of your sewing machine and you will find what foot you need to um, use to make a buttonhole or a button in your work. So to put the foot back on, you put the plate, to, you put the foot right underneath the needle and then you bring the little lever down and because it's magnetic, it will catch it and bring it back up for you. I'm bringing it back up. Bring your thread through the foot and always make sure that the thread goes at the back of your work. If it's at the front, it might catch in your plate underneath. So where it's putting the fabric through, you don't want the thread at the top to catch down the bottom because that can um, cause the thread at the back of your work to... Um, um gather and gather in a way where it becomes all knotty and kind of things does that make sense am i making sense in what i'm saying i hope i am so i'm going to show you now how i'm going to be able to sew on this machine so i'm going to put the foot just there and i'm going to press start and then i'm going to push this button and then it allows me to go back on these stitches and then I'm going to push start again. Now I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch um, seam allowance. Now I should have measured it all the way around. But my measurements is, if I just stop, on the actual uh, bottom of the foot. Now my manual machine has this. So even though I'm showing you an automatic, I know my manual has it as well. On the um, plate underneath, it gives you little markings and on each marking it will say whether it's a half inch a quarter inch and that will be able to tell you whether you want to bring your work in a quarter inch half inch so um sometimes you don't need necessarily need to mark your work because the markings are already on the plate underneath oh i like the red and green stop go like oh sarah yeah me too it's so much easier right let's go so much easier i might have to do this again because i don't think it's catching the water but it might be well i'm just going to speed this up a little bit i'm just going to go all the way around Guiding the fabric as I go. And if for any reason you want to stop, I'm going to click that and bring my work around. So don't be afraid of an automatic machine because or a manual one. The idea is you could you the idea is that you enjoy what you're doing. Click stop on that. I'm gonna bring this fabric. Wait a second, let me just lift this foot up. sure that I'm gathering all my material and my wadding in one piece. Thank you. 
and I'm just guiding the fabric. So if I'm going off a little centre, I'm pushing the fabric, depending on whether I'm going off or not, I'm pushing the fabric away from the back side. Right, let me just stop it there. I'm going to bring my work round. I'm so at the angle as well because I want to show you guys what, what, how I'm doing it. I'm going to hit start. So in a second, I'm going to stop it the last time. I'm going to stop it just there. And I'm going to go back a couple of stitches. Three, four, five. Cut a bit. Lift the plate up, and then that piece then is all this. That piece is done. If you notice, it left it's about a quarter of an inch all the way around. My wadding's a little bit big on this side, but it doesn't matter because when I come to um, so in this section, once I've turned it inside out, I can cut the wadding down. So let me have a think, right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my fabric. Now, I don't know whether I'm... Yeah, my hands are just I'm going to cut this wadding down because it's all... It's just bothering me a little bit. Like I say, we're going to do some bridal rework as well tonight. Okay my piece work i'm gonna get my now there's two ways you can do this next bit you can either let me put these pins back in my drawer my parole machine i have worn out our brass yes yes it is lovely and quiet yes marla completely agree with you it is really really quiet such a quiet machine too what happens if the light turns yellow yellow um Oh, red, amber, and green. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I like the red and green stop light. Well, if it changes yellow, then I'm really in trouble. This has never done yet so far. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this next bit. I don't know where to put my little scissors. Bear with me while I find my little scissors. Oh, there it is. So there's two ways you can do this next bit. You can either go in and make little incisions with your scissors all the way around, right? Or you can take your pink and shears and because you don't want your, the last thing you want is your, um, last thing you want is for this to be bulky i'm trying to think of what to call it but like i said because this is it can be used for so many things it's not necessarily um sewing it can be used for many other things I don't know what i have forgot to do is put a pocket on I think I'm going to do that now before I put our lace on the back. Should have done it first, but since I'm putting the lace on the outside, you're not going to see the stitching anyway. Right, I'm going to do that. Right, let's get a pocket on the go. Right, let's cut to me. I want a little pocket to go in my machine. So if I have that as my top bit, I should have cut this first, really, and I didn't think. So I just square inch, and I can always cut it down then. Okay, 
time. Okay. I'm going to fold it in half because then I can find where I want to put my pocket. Uh, let me find. Now I have one somewhere because I had it the other day. What have I done with it? Right, I need my pencil for my personal day. I'm looking for good night, Marlu. I will catch up for the weekend. Oh bless. Thank you so much for popping in. Um I'm looking for and I've got two somewhere. I do you think I can find one? Oh you are better still. Right. We're gonna now mark. I want a bit of a pocket inside. I'm going to make the pocket before we sew the lace on. So what I'm going to do is I need a ruler. Is try and work out how how deep you want your pocket. So you could have it from there all the way down to the bottom. Bearing in mind when you put some stuff in. So our see if you can see the shape our shape is going to look a bit like that and then that's how where our pocket's going to be so i want the pocket to be around there i think so when i fold this over like so the pocket's there so i'm going to make the pocket and then we'll sew it on in a second so let's just decide. Let's do four inches there, four inches there, and I'm, I'm going to use my ruler and my cutter to cut those two lines together. So make sure my work is together. Hi, Shah, sweetheart. Right, let me just want to cut the strip. Chris, close the door for me, love. That away. And then I'm going to cut it here. Once we've done this pocket, I'm going to move on to the embroidery work. That one. I'll turn them over. Sure, my line is. I'm on my line. I don't want my work to be not straight. Now that will tell you how many inches I've cut. So I've just made a little pocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew down here, down there, and leave a gap so I can turn it the other way around, just like we did with the circle. So I'm going to move all these back. I'm going to spin your background to the machine. A second. Bear with me. That's better. Okay. So cotton at the back again now you can use pins for this don't necessarily have to do it without you know without pins i'm going to put my foot now i'm going to help me out i'm going to make sure my edge of my foot is on the edge of my work 
that'll help me out to keep it straight so i'm going to go for a couple of seconds stop i'm going to come back stop and i'm going to keep going all the way around and then this will create our pocket and when we come to sew it in our work lift the foot up and again with what we just done make sure the line of the fabrics on our work just helps me know where i am lift the foot up turn the work and so i can't see any of the comments so Bear with me a second, then I can read any questions you've got. I'm going to leave a gap now for when we're coming up this side. So I'm going to leave there, go back a couple of inches, and then cut it. And that's our pocket. So again, like what we did with the other one, I'm just going to go around with my pinky shears and with the corners, to give me a nice corner, I'm going to go at an angle. All the way around. At an angle. And my iron is on, so we can iron this flat. It's not going to... And you can put as many pockets as you want. I'm only putting one in. You could make a pocket to hold a pencil or a brush. You can make this for anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be for sewing. Okay. Okay, so there's our piece. You'll have to bear with me when I um, switch and swap in the um, camera around. So bear with me a second while I keep doing that. I don't mean to make you feel dizzy. Hi, River Sweetheart. Right, we're going to iron this bit. So let me get the tools we need to do that. Put my ruler back. So we've cut all our pieces now. It's just a case of putting it all together. So I've gotten this little uh, mini cut and press. Why is it called a cut and press? Because it's press one side and it's a cutting mat the other side. So I could cut on this with my rotary mat. Um, this is this is just a mini one, so it goes from five inches to five inches tall. So it's perfect for what I need it for. So we're going to use this side and we're going to just press this side to turn it inside out. But before we do, let's turn it inside out first. And then once we've put our pocket on, I know you're all keen to see me embroid. We're going to do some embroidery work. Why not? So pull this straight through. And then I'm going to use the tweezers to get in those corners. And I'll show you why I cut the corners at an angle in a second. Come on. Oh, my finger, fingers and thumbs today. And if you think you've missed a bit, so if there's a gap in your stitching, turn it the other way, the wrong way around, and then take it back on your stitching. So this is why I cut the corners the way I did. So it gives me a nicer edge. I'm going to push those corners out with my tweezers and then I'm going to cut it and press it. There is Angie. Angie is monitoring this week. Um, not that I didn't want to have her live with me, of course, I love having Angie on live. Um, but she decided to, she'll be back next week crafting with me, but she decided to just watch this week. So Miss Paisy is watching, she's in the chat. Now I've cut and pressed that, I'm going to fold my edges in. And like I say, you're not going to see this, this because this is going to be on the inside of what we're making. 
and once I put it together you'll actually see it come in together so let me manage just quickly put that through on my machine come on done Ah, come on. I think I press it in. Oh, come on. There we are. I'm going to press that down and then it'll be a lot easier then for when I take it onto the machine. I say, I say, I say, I say. Right. I'm just taking it on my cell machine. So there's my little stitching. Like so you won't see this at all. Now, it's totally up to you at this point whether you want to put a lace, whether you want to put a ribbon, whatever you want to do. What I've got for my little pocket is, if I can find it underneath all my mess, this is the pocket that's going to be seen in my work. I've got some of this lace, wherever it's gone. There it is. If you're going to see it, because it's going to be the inside of your your um, sewing storage. I'm going to pop it. I'm going to pop it just there and then I'm going to take one of these other pieces of lace. I don't know, let me have a look. Yeah, this one's a little bit wider. There, that's what I want. So me, and I'm not bothered by the bottom because I can always put another section on. I'm concentrating so much tonight. <laughs> Do you know that? I know because everybody's watching me. I'm concentrating so much. Right, I'm gonna. I can feel you all watching me. It's like, ah! Right, I'm going to take some of my laces just to make myself a nice pretty pocket. And then I'm going to turn you guys around and I'm going to sew this on. This is why I said you won't see the stitching to turn it the other wrong way, wrong way around. Put my pins back and we need them. No, I haven't put the pins back to the way. Right. Um, come on. Is that um, I'm going to use a set amount of pins for this. So, make sure I can see that edge of the lace because I really want that to be the pin point. Use that one there. I'm going to put one just here, and that should be enough to hold what I want it to hold. Move these scissors. I am going to turn you around again. So, like I say, I'm really going to apologize for making you feel a bit sick tonight. I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing, making sure my thread goes on my back of my work. And I'm going to start off this edge. Now I'm going to go as close as I can to the edge. So instead of my fabric being on the edge of my work, I've put my needle in. There's, uh, with every machine, there's um, oh, like a wheel on the side of the machine. And then that wheel enables you to um, put the needle in your work before you start stitching to make sure you've got it in the right place, basically. 
just making sure I'm not too close. Right, so off we go again. I'm going to go back just there. Like I say, you know, you weren't going to see those stitches that I created. I'm going to turn it that way. And then this gives me a nice lacy effect of it. I hope you're all looking forward to me doing some embroidery work with you. I must admit, I did some, like I say, I tried some earlier and then um, I've been itching to do it with you tonight. So I am really looking forward to it. I'm going to show you how to put some, um, I've got some nice pink thread to do the leaves with. Now, because of the way that lace is going to go, I'm going to put it at the top of the second lace. Let me show you. If I put it at the top, what's going to happen is there's going to be there's going to be a gap here. So if I go straight across here, it enables this lace to give it a little bit of wee wee. And I can always go back up the runner. Let me undo that. Let's see what it looks like. If I need to put a, um, some stitching at the top, I will do. So, so do I need? Yes, I do. So let me just quickly do this again. I don't want it getting too close to the edge, but I just want enough stitches. I'm watching the stitch through the foot as well to make sure that I'm on the, that cotton fabric. Two, three, and cut. And then that is my pocket. Sorted, done. Don't have to mess about with that at all. Turn you again. I do apologise when we keep turning you. I don't mean to keep making me feel sick if I am. Brown, do you like mint tea? I love it, but only drink decaf. Oh, Mrs. G, are you getting um, um, herbal tea by any chance? What do you call it? Chamomile tea. So there's my pocket, my lacy pocket to go inside my little imagery. Now, I don't know what to call it, which is why I'm like stuck as to what to call it. I would call it a holder because it can hold so many things. Um, so it's just depending on what you want to put in it. Now, I'm going through the two fabrics. If you notice, this hasn't been sewn. I've sewed all around the edge. But these three layers I haven't sewed yet. So go through the fabric, the cotton fabric. I knew this didn't catch. Um, before I do that. Pull this wadding up, and I'm gonna put a pin. I'm gonna put a pin just there. Okay, I'm caught it just there because it's just the wadding, and it's important that I catch the wadding. And I'm gonna go all the way around till I stop that edge. So bear with me a second, ladies and gents. Let me move that out the way. Speed this up. Where's my oh there's my stop? So I've speeded this pace up a bit. Three and cut. Okay. Back where we was. Right. Turn your go through your two cotton cottons. Grab as much as you can. My hand, I've left enough room for my hands to appear at the other end. And turn it inside out, and you will have cotton on one side and cotton on the other. Now, I've learned 
if I turn a cushion inside out, um, I've learned sometimes when I turn it inside out, I always have the ward in. So I always think now, if I put the two fabrics together and the warden on the outside, when I turn it inside out, it'll be the right way. So I'm going to take this warden up a little bit because it's, for some reason it's gone a bit too thick. That's better. So I'm going to press that now before I sew it. And I can read some comments out. So, like I say, I'm going to put the pocket on and then we're going to do some embroidery work. I hope you're all excited. You're all excited to see embroidery work. I won't do it if you don't want me to. You know that. <laughs> I won't do it if you really don't want me to. <laughs> all right, I'm going to press the other side. And this looks like a cushion, but I'm putting sewing stuff in. So... I want it to be um, have a bit of padding in because it's going to hold my sewing stuff inside it. Right. So again with the serge, I'm going to tuck in and I'm going to press it on my um, oh god, what's it called? Iron. I was going to say rod iron, and I was like, ah, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to get some pins out before I take on the machine. This is the other thing. I do my day sashes through the week, which, by the way, I've had a really good response. I want to say thank you, everyone, for watching my video on my day stash because I really didn't have confidence that nobody would watch it. And then when you all started watching and commenting, I was thinking, oh, perhaps I have done like a real good video. And perhaps I've done something, you know, that I honestly thought nobody was going to watch it. Um, so thank you so much for all, all your views and your nice comments you've left me. It does mean a lot. Right, we're going to take this on our machine. And then we're going to pop our, so we can sew it all in one go. So work out, now your next two pieces of cotton that I had you to cut. So you'll have four pieces. Just me playing around with the camera, so I do apologise. Um, you'll have four pieces. Now work out where you want your pocket to be. Do you want it to be further up? So bear in mind now when this closes, it's going to close. You're going to see the pocket. Or you, are you going to be putting it there? So that when you fold right, the right way, so on that least at the top, you can just about see it. Now you will notice that this fabric's a little bit bigger than the one behind. When I've sewed it, they'll be the same size. So I will just work out where you want it to be. Now I'm going to put it there. And I'm going to put a pin. And let me find my little ones. If it's doing, if I'm going to do it properly, do a good job. But there's two there. Right. So I want to put, I want to make a... Um, a small incision in here where I can put like um, a fabric pencil or something like that. And then I'm going to sew for all the way down here, straight across and up. And then I'm going to make a line straight down there. So I'm going to move my pins and we're going to sew. Now I don't need my um, I call it iron anymore at the moment because after we've done this we're going to do some fire work i'm so excited you know really excited okay. right oh wait a second i've got the can you all see that let me know whether you whether you can see because i want you to be able to see when i'm sewing we want to see the embroidery. Oh, good. <laughs> I won't do the embroidery tonight if you don't want guys to see it. <laughs> I didn't say your machine sounded like a tractor, Miss Paisy. I said it sounded really loud. You said it sounded like a tractor. <laughs> I said it sounded loud. When we were doing the live, somebody said that we, Angie was um, 
they can hear my voice over Angie's machine. And bless her little cotton socks. She's been so weary to use that machine ever since because she thinks that um, I'm just going to make one stitch with my wheel. I'm going to go back twice before I go forward. Slow the speed down. That would be brilliant. Yeah, like I say, Miss Paisley's been a bit nervous to use a machine ever since um, we did that live. Nobody could hear her. <laughs> it is loud. I'm not saying that it's not quiet because it's not. Angie knows it's not quiet. But she got her automatic machine out last night. And that sounded a lot better. I think, Angie, I've been thinking about this. I think your machine might need servicing, you know. Have you ever had it serviced? So we've done the edge and see how neat that is. Nobody's going to notice that. So where I started, I will have to cut these threads just a little bit. So let's do so I'll pocket in and then we can do some embroidery work. We are getting there. So down like that. Going backwards and I'm going forwards. Try to speed this up a little bit. All the way to the corner and I'm going to stop. Tell you what I forgot to do is put the lace on, but never mind. In the, in the inside. It doesn't matter because I might not put a lace on the inside. I was just thinking, should I put the lace on in the inside? That's why I cut four pieces. It doesn't matter because I can, you're not going to really see the inside of the work. It's inside of the, should we call it a bag? I don't know what to call it. Case? I'm not sure. Right, so only go up three sides because if you do the fourth, you won't that pocket that you just spent so long making is not going to be use any use don't be daft i only bought it four months ago oh i just wondered because sometimes machines when they're that loud they need servicing it was just a thought it was a great video the only trouble is that my heavy saw bits of it and now he's hinting that i need to tidy my craft corner oh bless julian well i must admit Chris, um, I've got to do a couple of, I want to do a couple of more, I'm going straight down now, now I'm in the centre, so I'm going to go just there. Um, Chris had said to me about tidying my room up, and he said, it's great, you need to tidy your room up, and I'm like, yeah, but it's all right me tidying it up. And I could, it could tidy it up, it could be perfect in the perfect craft room you could ever imagine to be in. But cut it. But um there's no point in doing that if my just seen my, my mess. <laughs> if my room is all messy, if if nothing I if I'm sorted anything out, that's what I'm trying to say. If I'm sorted, nothing out. So there's my pocket. So I've got a pocket there. And I've got a little pocket to put a pencil in there. So there's my there's my pocket. So there's our sort of our back sort of the inside of ours done. Now before I go on to the embroidery work, there's just one thing I want to do before I start doing the work on the machine, and that is before I forget because we're going to use. What have I just done with it? What have I just done with it? I had it like 10 seconds ago. Um, oh, here it is. Because this, uh, you can put a button on if you want. Now, I, I am going to be putting a button on mine. But you need to put some sort of a ribbon. Now, the ribbon at the top, this is, this is going to be the back. So this is the inside of the back, if you will. This ribbon needs to be a little bit longer. And you'll see why when it comes to doing the second ribbon, because there's two ribbon needs to go on those two circles. 
this one needs to be a bit longer than the first one and I'm going to post him in the inside I do it on the outside because the lace going on the outside I'll do it on the outside right let me turn it that way so I'm going to run it through Again. Try again. So I'm going to put it just there, like so. So that, that's going to flip over. So I'm going to do a couple of stitches. So I won't move the camera in order to do that. I do hope you're enjoying tonight's life. It's a little bit different to what I normally do. The machine nearly ran away with me then. So now I've got a loop on the edge. Now you know one of these circles right, that I cut? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round, but I'm not going to do that until I put the pink stitch in because I want some nice pink stitching to go all the way around. So to remind me that I've got to put that in, because sometimes when I, I cut my pieces and then I kind of forget that I've cut them, I'm going to put two pins in, and then that's that done. Now, Where's my perhaps I could have to leave? I don't know I'm I'm just looking for the foot. Right, now I'm gonna move on to my embroidery piece. That is my that's what my piece looks like on the inside. So now you can sort of see it coming together. This is gonna go on there and then this will come down. Okay, so now you can sort of see it come together. This is how you see it. Um, I've been trying to find craft channels that do mostly sewing and embellishing. Nice to find in this one. Oh, thank you, River. Thank you so much. Hand sewing the printed prayer turns out, and I'll hang it on the wall. Yeah, Mum's been doing. Oh, I've got to show you guys. Got to show you. It's absolutely amazing. It's taken us such a long time. She's doing him. Um, um, embroidery work by hand embroidery work if that makes any sort if I'm making any sort of sense it's absolutely amazing um but I will definitely have to show you guys how how that how she's done it because it's absolutely amazing but thank you River for that comment it means so much to me because sometimes I'm always nervous whether to do it on the machine whether to sit here and do glue um and I do like using my glue but like I say, if I knew <laughs> new toy. So as I was saying right at the very start of this video, um, each week, because I don't know what I, these are all my feet. Let me just quickly show you. For those that did enjoy me right at the very start, these are my feet. My mum made me this for, every, for all the feet to belong in. Um, anyway, these are my feet, right? I've uh, got feet in there too. So, um, just trying to think. No. Um, what was I going to say? Every week I'll be testing out a new foot and showing you guys what I've learned doing that foot. Um, because I don't know this machine and don't know it sort of off by hand. I'm just making sure I'm put that foot in now. But is this this one? It was this that one I had out, wasn't I? I'm sure it was that one I had out. Down by my feet. No, down by my feet. No, down by my feet. Oh. I just want to take a new squash. Right, I'm showing sure it was this foot. Like I was saying, every week I'll be doing a new foot and showing you how um 
what I've learned and what each foot does. So um, next week I will be doing one of the feet. I'll just pick one and I'll do it that way because um, as much as me showing you the machine, I think it's equally nice. The, the feet you can get on any machine. Most most machines um, do most of these feet because that's what they call them. And so by me doing a foot each week, not only will I learn something, but you guys can be on the learning journey with me. So yeah, it's it's a learning here. Now I'm sure it's this one I had out. Right? If I've mixed it up, I've mixed it up, but I'm sure it's this one I had out. Anyway, um, we're gonna do some embroidery work. Now I'm gonna be putting some pink ribbon in. But before I do that, I need to bring out, I need to sort of do this section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this piece back on itself because I want to know where, I'm sure it's that foot I had out. I want to know where I want to put my embroidery work. Now, all this bottom piece is going to be covered with some doilies and some lace and some fabric. And the bottom bit is where I had the inspiration from Sarah's channel, because she did a beautiful, um, it's called, I actually wrote it down, it's called The Vintage Lady with Umbrella Wall Hanging. So if you go over to Sarah's Shabby Chic Creations, you will find that very video. And her, her actual piece was covered in laces and doilies, and it really inspired me. So the bottom piece, that's exactly what that's going to be. Now, the top piece is where I'm going to embroider. So like I did with the back piece, I put the two cotton fabrics together, and then I put a bit of the wadding inside the fabric. But because I don't want my because this piece will be showing i don't want the embroidery piece to be seen because the idea is when you close it this is why you do a um a large loop this end and there will be short loop this end so if i do a short loop you'll see where it go where i'm going with it it goes through there and then you pick this one up then and that's how you carry it up so because if i if i put the two pieces of cotton together and then the wad in and then I embroider. Not only will I'm not sure whether it'll go with whether it'll go through because it's too thick, but that aside, you'll see the stitching both sides, and I don't want that. I want to be able to just see the embroidered piece one side. So I'm going for the embroidered piece this side, and then I'd be putting it on my machine. Thank you, Claire. Loved your life. Gotta go. Good night. Good night. God bless, Shaz. Thank you for stopping by. Good night, God bless Shaz. Um, so, embroidery piece. So we've done, mainly done the back piece, but I'm not going to stitch on the back piece until the very end so that I know where I am. So I'm going to put this aside. I might have to split this into two videos, but we'll see where I'm going. Now, this, no, where I was going with it is, now you can build it up as many times as you want. So oh, I want my piece to go there and I'm just marking out roughly where it will be curved in so I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch each side so with a pencil or um, a chalk is what I'm going to be using I'm going to stitch all the way around here because that piece you'll see and then I'm going to bring in where's my little guide gone haha <laughs> I've got my guide and um, this is a sewing gauge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work this way and I'm going to go in about half an inch about half an inch and mark it because then I'll be able to know where I'm going on my machine with it I'm gonna I'm gonna sew that line now with white cotton and then I've left myself half an inch 
actually to the side as well. Half an inch all the way around the side. Now I'm a bit nervous of doing this because like I said, it's a learning curve for me. So I'm not sewing this edge because I want this to come up, but I, what it will do is I'm going to press this side. So I'm going to bring my presser over on my iron and I'm going to press that edge. Make sure I've got it where I want it to go. Keep pressing that edge. Keep, because I want that edge to be completely flat, because this is the edge that I'm going to sort of go off. So now that's pressed, I feel a bit nervous. <sighs> Red and bright. Oh yeah, I am. Right. So, okay. Now I'm going to attempt to do the leaves wherever they've gone. So my little tip that I got from Mum today was because really what needs to happen is you need to find yourself some um. um what they call it Fuse, fusible no it's not fusible fleece what am i looking for what's the word not fusible fleece yeah fusible fleece right so what needs to, realistically needs to happen is you need to put fusible fleece behind the piece you're embroidering because if you don't the the stitches will pucker so because i haven't got fusible fleece and i don't want to build my fabrics up just quite yet because i haven't finished what i'm doing i don't want my stitches to be seen the other side is i'm going to lift that and i'm going to take some printing paper now this is just normal printing paper so nothing special at all i don't want my stitches to be seen and I'm going to just rip that off. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to stitch that on. Right. Before I stitch this on, we're going to do um, a quick stitch just all the way around from this side to this side in white cotton. And then we're going to switch the cotton in pink and we're going to do some embroidery work. <laughs> You're learning with me tonight, guys. I swear. I am nervous, but this is a process of learning. In crafting, there is nothing, you know, nothing comes um, perfect. You've got to practice with these things. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to go in on the edge. I'm going to put my needle in first to see where I am. Now that's too close. I'm just going to bring it in there. I'll bring my speed down. So I'm hoping you guys can see. Let me know if you can't or whether that's a clear picture. While I read some comments out and drink a glass of squash, let me know whether that's a clear picture or whether you can see everything because I really want you to be able to see this ribbon work. Embroidery work. We did a hand. Candle wick sped. Yeah, you said that about that, Mrs. G, didn't you know? When you were looking at the doilies I gave you, you said your grandmother uh, sews them. Thank you, Rianne. Thank you, sweetheart. Right, here we go. I'm going to go back a couple of stitches. One, two, three. And I'm going to guide my fabric. Like I say, I don't want to go too close to the edge. Might speak this up just a second. That's better. I'm going to be here all day. And the markings in blue, that comes off because it's fabric choke, cho um, dressmaker's choke, that's what they call it. You should find proper words for stuff, actually. 
and we're going to switch the foot as well. So I'm going to keep going where I've pressed that piece on the other side. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to go all the way up to where I've just pressed it. And I'm going to go back now. One, two, three, four. And cut. So I've done a small like little stitching all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is to make those stitches a lot secure. I'm going to take my pinky shears and I'm going to just go around the edges of the pinky shears, making sure I don't go into those stitches I've just done. Now you can always put um um what they call it seam binding or ribbon or wherever you want to put on the sides you can you can just sit and you can do it i am going to actually do that but i'm going to do that at a later stage won't be doing it just yet because of my ribbon work right so there is that top bit don't worry about the bottom bit as for now because um the bottom bit i'm not too worried about so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch the feet now and the thread. So I've got this thread. It's a real nice dark pink. So at the top, come on, camera, let me turn the thing out. You can see all the different stitches. So the stitch we are going for is number 90, which is this stitch, which if you look at the screen the monitor, I'm just having a look at, see if you can see the monitor. Come on, Claire, come down a little bit with the camera. And then to catch up before I do anything else, because I want to show you. There we are. Right, so you look at the monitor, because I know you can't see the numbers at the top. So don't worry about the numbers at the top. I'm going to change the thread. So I'm going to bring my thread up. And I'm going to cut the thread at the top. Now, usually when you cut, when you want to stitch the thread, you would um, cut it up the top and pull it from the top. This is the, the, my number one trick. If you cut it from the top, right, pull it from the bottom so that you are not dragging any dust through your thread. Thanks, man, for that tip. I remembered it. Pull it through the bottom. Your so that any, if you've got any dust in your machine, it won't be pulled up. And um, so always pull your, cut the thread at the top and pull it from the bottom. That way then, I guarantee not pulling any dust through your machine. Right. Okay. So lift this. Take the little clasp off. Now I have got a bigger one for bigger spools. Take my white spool off. Right, my pink thread, the, the cotton needs to come this way. And I'm going to put this back on. And then I'm going to take this thread and I'm going to put it, follow the numbers. On every machine, you've got numbers and it will tell you where to go on your machine. So I'm just guiding this where it needs to be. Oh, wrong way. No, I thread that wrong, so I'm going to cut it and I'm going to pull it from the bottom, not the, not the top. One, two, three, four, back down to five. I'm going to go six and I'm going to show you this little trick. Right, let me make sure you can see. I push this down. Let me just see if I can. Yeah, 
Hem ne? There. Right. So this is where my automatic machine comes in um, when it comes through to thread in there. I'm going to take it under there with the notches. There's two little prongs just there. I'm going to let oh, wait, no. Maybe there. Come on. See, it's ready to for me. Right, put it back at the back of my machine, put it through the foot, and make sure my thread is at the back of my machine. So let me bring it back up. Okay, so I'm gonna tilt the machine just like so for you to see a bit more of my work. Right, okay, we've got no, I am put the foot on. I didn't think I had. I need to put the right foot on. So I'm gonna let go of this foot and I'm gonna put this one on. Um there. Right, there's the foot. Right, so this is the sorry guys about me being quiet because I had to concentrate about where I was going. Okay, the screen. This is what I need to look at. So I'm going to press the middle button and make sure you all can see. So I can see it. Clear. Thank you, Gillian. I've been using rhinestones if they think they are three butterflies. So I think it's a 2019 project though. You used a lot of beads and a lot of cross stitch. Oh wow, Dee Dee. Right, middle button. And we're looking for stitch 90. 40, 50, 60. Can you see all the different patterns? I'm gonna go slow so you can see the patterns, hoping that you can see them. Let me know if you can see the patterns. There's the kite there, look. And there's some leaves that are there, but I want some more detail waves. So these kind of look like butterflies, like more than leaves. And then you've got like a bow leaf here, some tulips there. Um, you've got some flowers here, that pretty leaves there which are really delicate and small i don't know what i've done with my scrap piece now but i did that earlier on some more leaves here and those are like um oh, those big leaves angie you've got them outside your house i can't remember that they're huge massive ones and i know carla you've done some videos where you've used those big leaves to create fairy houses with um Maple leaves, that's what Chris is showing, maple leaves. So stitch 90 we need. So that tells us the stitch and that tells us what foot we need. Now on each foot of this machine, and I don't know whether you guys would be able to see it, but on each foot they tells me a letter. So if I've got this plate in, the machine is actually telling me, well, no, you need a B plate in. This plate that I'm in my hand is an A, and that plate that I've just put in is a B. Just to let you, just one more thing. So these two, I'm not quite sure of what has of what yet because I'm still learning about my machine. Yes, River Sweetheart, it is a singer. It's a singer quantum stylus machine. It does um, embroidery, quilting, the, it's, oh, the whole nine yards basically. But yes, it is a singer, Sweetheart. So this one is my length now earlier on when i was messing about and i did, would say this to anyone if you're doing something on a machine write down what length and stitch you want your pattern to be so for my length i want it to be seven and then if i go back which it is at seven if i go back this is my width 
and I want that to be 2.6. Oh. Right there. There it is, 2.6. And that's 7. So if I go back, then that gives me the 2.6 and 7. So because I don't want to mess my piece of work up because I've been concentrating all night long on how to do it, I'm going to cut. There's my little piece of scrap. So these are the different leaves. I'm going to cut those little threads away. And I'm going to test it on a piece of scrap first to see if I'm quite happy with where I want my machine to be. Okay. Um, I do want that bit. Okay, so, so on this piece of scrap, I've just got a piece of bag behind because, again, I haven't got any of that um, fusible fleece stuff. So I'm going to pop it under and I'm going to pop it there and I'm just going to click go. And it's now embroidering. And this is just a scrap piece to make sure that I what it's what that I want it to be. I don't want it to be any smaller or any bigger. So let it go to right to the end and then I'll stop it. Just gonna do one more, I think. Let's go back and cut that. And then there's my there's my um leaves there. So it's for some reason five, I think. So let me check my book because I wrote it down. The length is seven, that's two point six, yeah, that's right. I'll do that again. I don't want to mess my piece of work up. And this time I'm just going to go across. Use the width. And do it again. This is why you need to do on a ah, there we are. This is why you need to do on a scrap piece first. Make sure. What you're sewing is right. Mm. I want the width um, slightly together, so let's do two point. I want the width to be smaller. The width to be smaller or the length? Trying to work it out, wait a minute. The width or the length? The length is that way. The width. Let's do the width of 2.2.2. .2. Let's do the width of 2. That might be better. Yeah, that's better, Luxie. That's what we that's what we're gonna achieve on our work. So I'm so glad now I did it on a piece of scrap and not on um on my actual work. So now I've got it where it wants to be. So I've got my width at two, not two point whatever I said. So I'm gonna find the middle of this circle first off by folding it in half and just finger pressing that section. And then I'm going to find the 
quarter of that section on the second. So there's my quarter. So I've done, there's my half, there's my quarter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start off this edge and then I'm going to go where that blue line is all the way up. So here we go. Right. I'm going to cut there. Let me bring it down. Right. That's where I want it to be. And oh my word, I'm so nervous. Night, Mom. Right. Go. And I've just gone back a few stitches. So it's just embroidering at the moment and it's just working those leaves. Now I don't have to do anything from here because I put in the machine what I want. And all I'm doing is just, I'm just guiding the machine now. I'm not doing anything else to it. I'm just guiding the machine to where I want it to go. And that's why I... So I'm going to stop it in a second because I can see the... The fabrics, it's, I can see the fabric trying to, there's better. I can see the fabric trying to fold because it's going in a half moon shape. It's trying to find where to go. Because I'm asking it to go in a half moon shape and I'm not asking it to go in a straight line, it's just trying to find its way, that's all. You can stop this at any time. You don't have to keep going around. You can switch the colours, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to do this on the, on the top. And then I've got some... brown that I was thinking we're doing something with. So we're going to go all the way to the other side. Now I'm going to keep it at this pace. I could speed it up, but I don't want to because otherwise if I speed it up, I know I'm not going to be keeping, I know myself, if I speed this up, I'm going to find it extremely difficult guiding the fabric to where I want it to go. So like you say, every week we're going to do something different. I'm going to do something different on this machine. So you will see me when we, we're going to try some patchworking. I've always wanted to do that. So we'll try some of that. Um, we'll definitely do more of this embroidery because I love embroidery work. Absolutely love it. And I love the effect it gives you afterwards. So we're going to go up to the um, mark point. So as you can see, it's just, I'll oh, tell you what I forgot to do. I forgot to stick paper underneath. This might pack up. That's why I have the paper out. Oh, darn it. It might, it's going to pack up because I haven't got any paper or fusible fleece underneath. I'm going to leave it go to that mark and then when we go and put some more embroidery on, I'm going to get the paper out. Because really I should have some fusible fleece under, underneath to stop it puckering. I'll show you what I mean by puckering in a second now. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I know you're all excited to see what it um, will do. So I'm just going to let it do this leaf and I'm going to stop it and just arrange my fabric. Oh, 
wait to see what it says. It's gonna crack up because I haven't got paper underneath. Did the foot, took my time with the thread, my time with the stitches, <laughs> and I forgot the paper, the one essential thing I needed. Never mind, it's a learning curve. And I know that this is only going to be the beginning of me doing embroidery. Like this isn't going to be the last thing I ever do. So I'm going to leave it go a little bit further and I'm going to stop it. And when we go across, um, I'm going to put paper on, on the back. And this is why I haven't put the two fabrics together. Because you'll notice now in a second, because it's it'll pack at the other side, you'll notice that you can see the stitch on the other side. So I'm going to leave it to this set, this leaf here. Just leave it. Just put in the middle leaf on by going back. There we are. Are you ready? Are you? <laughs> oh, my word, it's done look out. So that is what we've got. <laughs> I'm so nervous to show you. That is what we've got, and we've done it all the way around in a half moon shape. So I went on my blue line that I did, and that's what we've got. Isn't that cool? I absolutely love that and what I meant by puckering is sometimes it'll gather on the back but can you see how you can see the stitches on the back this is why I'm with the two face the two sides together so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn you this way and I'm going to show you it face down and what we're going to do now is it's amazing I absolutely love that is we're gonna go and we're gonna do here and I'm also see when this folds in half so that's how it's gonna go on my purple thing and um, I'm gonna do a cross here so what I need to do now is I'm gonna put some paper that's why I got it out I should have done um I should have done the paper first, but I forgot to do it. So let me have a look. I don't think it needs paper. No, I don't think it does. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. I don't think I'm going to do paper because I think it doesn't need it. Oh, yes, it does. It is puckering. Yeah, it is. Right, let me get another piece of paper. Right, I'm going to go straight across, but where's my chalk? So my chalk, let me turn this way. Uh, I just go, wow, oh my word. Right, I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to now mark, it's half an inch on the left. I'm going to mark half an inch now this way. Now, I could do the same pattern. Shall I do, and there we are, shall I do, I'm feeling a little bit confident now you've all watched me do this. Shall I do the same pattern or shall I do a different pattern? What would you, what would you like me to do? See, I could do some leaves that came, comes down. I think I might do that actually, it sounds quite pretty, doesn't it? So let's do, I'm going to draw with this. I'm going to do I'm just going to follow my stitching and do one there. I'm going to do one there and one here. Drawn out my And we're just going to follow the lines. I'm going to do a, um, a flower in the centre of that. So let me turn it this way. I'm 
and you can draw any shape you want it doesn't necessarily have to be and i'm going to draw one mini one here i'm going to stick to the same pattern i think so let me i'm going to do these leaves i'm not going to do at the bottom I'm just going to do the leaves hi dan sweetheart So, do it on my. I'm going to do it on my machine. So, I'm going to put my needle on my line. So, that's on my line. There. So, I'm going to start this up. I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to. Just gonna follow those lines that I created. Let it do one more leaf. Go back. Cut that. Thread it. Oh, thread the back. And I'm going to go down that edge again and just cut where it's just been. Hope you guys get to see me doing this. It's not just a case of me showing you. I'm going to go, I'm going to start it just there, I think. Oh, let me move it around a bit. I mean, if you guys can see that. So I'm just guiding my machine. Let me do that leaf. I'm going to stop it there once it's finished. Lift my foot up and move my fabric. Let me do one more leaf. a few steps cut it lift it and then bring my thread in the back oops thread in the back there and I'm going to go again but this time so that's how that one's turned out see so I'm going to go just I'm going to leave it right in the edge I think just concentrating so I apologize if I'm not talking might have to do this in two lives because of course with me um Wanted to start it off. So play about with your machine. If you're playing on, if you're practicing on cotton, make sure to put some paper behind, otherwise it will pack up. But I am, I didn't begin it with paper, so I don't want to sort of mess about and start doing paper. I'm gonna go back a few steps. I'm gonna cut it. Bring it up. And I'm going to begin it just there. No, wait a sec. There. So I'm following the lines, but I know where I'm where I want to guide it so I've sort of got a clear vision in my mind where I want it to go and 
this is revolver, guys. I'm a machine. How cool is this? So I'm going to go back a few steps. I'm going to cut it, bring it up, bring that through there like, oh, right now my thread's got that through there. And then I'm going to start on the other side. And then I'll show you where we're, where we're at. So thank you for all your amazing comments. Uh, what, like I said, I was really nervous as to whether to do this tonight because I've never ever done a uh, ribbon embroidery work on a machine. I've done hand embroidery work, but never have I done it on a machine where um, I want to do it on a picture or whether I want to do it on something. I've never done it on a machine like this, so it's really nice. That you get to come along in my crafting journey with me and you get to experience it with me because after all i would never have got this confident if i wasn't showing you tonight so i'm going to do one more leaf maybe it go where it wants to and i'm going to go back a few steps Oh. Cut that up. Um, hoping you guys get to see what I'm doing. And then let me just. I'm going to read some of the comments out now because I've been. Try a different pattern, your machine is brilliant. Right, okie doke. Uh, let me do these leaves and what I'll do is I'll do a different pattern or might I might do some tulips. Would you guys like like to see some tulips done? What about some tulips to go off these leaves? You do some how what you what you say to that if I did some tulips? I'm going to do some leaves on this section and then I'll do some tulips to go off the leaves. I'm just going to follow it this way. I'm going to let it do one more and I'm going to stop it like I've done the rest. One, two, three, and cut. Bring that up there. Make sure my thread's through the foot. And I'm going to start it just here. Okay. You can sort of see the picture building. I'm going to do all this. I don't know whether to do it in brown. I have got like pink. I do the tulips in like pink, I suppose. What do you guys think? Should do you want me to do um, some flowers to come off these leaves? I'm going to read some comments now, so I'll be able to see them in just a second. I'm going to let it do one more leaf on this side, and then I'm going to start for you then. And I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to go back three steps, and I'm going to cut it. Oh, I like tulips, Sarah says. Yes, please, tulips. Right, okay. I'm going to do some leaves just on the edge, and I'm going to show you then what it's turning out to be like. And then I will do some tulips. Oh, my word. Like I say, you guys are giving me the confidence to do this. Do you not realise that? Because I would never, ever have attempted this. Um, if I was sitting here on my own craft, and I would never have attempted this. I'll do some tulips. Shall I do it in light pink or shall I do it in the same colour? My next question. Well, I'm concentrating on doing these last few leaves for you. Light pink or the same colour? I'm going to stop it. 
just there, take it back a few steps, cut it, lift up. I've got two more places now to put this, and then that should be it. Light pink or the same color of tulips. Just going to do these. Let it do this leaf, and I've got a section over there I've drawn out. Let me go back a few steps. Cut it. Oh, lift it. I'm going to bring my thread through, and then I've got a section just here that I'm going to. I'm going to read the comments now, guys. I'm just going to let it do one more leaf. And then I'm going to stop it. And now I'm going to do some tulips. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, I'm going to go back a few steps. Three cut it. I'm going to turn you this way. And this is our leaves. Oh, this is where I've started it. Oops. These are our leaves. And how amazing is that? Isn't that cool? And these uh, blue lines I've drawn, they can be sort of undone later. This is where it's just, I haven't cut it when I was doing it, that's all. And this is all going to be covered, so I'm not bothered by it being um, seen. That's our leaves. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so excited! <laughs> right, light pink is what saying to you. Um, I'm trying to think what I call pink cotton. Um, light pink, so I've said light pink. Light pink, light pink. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so good to even believe. Right. Um. Now, what we need to do now? So I'm going to turn you this way. Is let me turn you that way. Is we need to take the thread out because we need to put some new thread in, and then we can put some tulips in. Woo! I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope you've all enjoyed this because I have enjoyed it equally as much. Pull the thread down from the bottom because I've cut it. Bring this up. Take this off and this off. And then we're going to put our thread on. There's that one goes there. That one goes there, and I'm gonna wind it through. Oops, wind it through back up, back up that way, back up that way, and we'll pull that together. Right, so let's see if we can find some tulips. Um, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to look, look. Come on, I saw some earlier. Um, Oh my days, I saw some. Ah, there they are, 77. Or oh, they. Yeah, I'll show you now. And uh, it's this one, isn't it? So again, I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper. She's looking at the screen. So 77 is that one there. So let me get a piece of scrap because I want to. There you are, I can do it on that piece that I had before. Okay. <gasps> oh my days. Did you get a new toy? Dawn Marie, this is my new toy. So I'm in like heaven. I'm in heaven. Right, let me thread. We're going to pick 77. Now, some of the stitches, it doesn't let you. Let me just put my thread in. Oh, 
come on. I'm just trying to come on. Ah, there it is. Like I say, I'm not going to be able to do all this in one live. I know I'm not. Oh my word, I can't do it on the machines. Wait a second, bear with me, guys. There, that's better. I'm trying to thread the thread in so I can. So I can play about with the width and the height. Right, we'll do some tulips and I think what we'll do is next week then when we come back next week is we will, um, is we will put it all together. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play about with the wick and the height. So I'm going to do the same, let me see what I get. I don't think. Oh, wait, stop. I'm using satin. Baby pink's not coming up. I'm going to cut a section of the cotton that I'm using. Baby pink is not coming up. For some reason, it won't allow me to. Get... No, it's not coming up because the cream is cream pattern. Not coming up, look, you can hardly see it. So, let me see what other threads I got. I got that sack of pink, I have white, or I have like a dusty brown. I cut through the tulips and brown to break the pink up, but the light pink's not working. Do you guys want me to do the dark pink, or shall I do some brown to mix the colours up? What do you guys reckon? The baby pink is not coming up, and it's because the fabric is white. Um, it needs to be. I need. I would have had to use darker fabric if I thought I would have done it. What about a dark color? I have that color, or I have that color, or let me see what the ones I've got. Let me see. Or. Yes, I can. Oh, what about purple? Purple, dark pink. Let me see if I can find dark pink. Uh, purple, yellow. Oh, I've got that color. That's like um, a pink. It's like um, yeah, it's like a. I'd say that's like a pink kind of ready kind of color. Or that one red. So these are the colours I've got, right? That I think that would match really well with our colour scheme. I have the that colour, which is like a, a pinky kind of colour. So we'll do A, B, or C. So tell me what colours to do. So that's A, B, C, or I'm just trying to find something. Or, oops. Or D for dark purple. Or E. So you've got five options. One, two, three, four, or five. Those are the five options we've got. So that light pink's not working because it's too light. So one, two, three, four, or five. Let me know. Mrs. G says the red. So would that be number two, Mrs. G? Sarah says C. Anyone else? B. Oh, Rian said B. Anyone else? I'm looking at the comments now. Tulips, please. Yeah, I'm going to, I promise the, um, I'll do tulips, but I just need a darker colour in order to show you guys. I've got C and I've got B so far. So these are the two colours. To try B or C. So this C. 
Dormarie says C. I'm going to get my thread out while everybody's deciding. Those are the colours. A, B, C, D, O, E, one, two, three. Two, Mr. G said two. Oops. Two. I'm going to get the um, thread out while I'm waiting on everyone. I can't make these decisions. <laughs> and I'm going to cut that. I'm going to pull it from the bottom. And I'm going to get rid of that thread out there. That's a shame because that would have gone perfect, but never mind. Right. Um, I have, what do I have? Two. Two for three and two for B. Three. Okay, so I've got three. So I'll go with Lila. And if all else fails, I'll go back to the red. I've done dark pink of my soul. I've got cotton now everywhere. Like I say, I'm not going to accomplish all this in um, one night. I know I'm not. So we'll see what we do now. Right, so this thread, this thread. These threads are new. Let me just. never is everybody else with me on this when you get a new thread i can never ever seem to find it and even when i do i spend most of my time looking in the light to see where the thread is um there it is um it's oh come on bear with me My word. Oh, there it is. Why is that not coming? Oh, come on. Why are they? I do apologize, guys. I don't understand why I can't. Surely to God. Why can I? Oh my word, come on. Come on. I can't get the thread. They didn't want me to get it, that's what it is. So you will definitely see more projects. I'm going to give up now in a second. For some reason, the thread seems to be all tangled. Now, stuck. Right, let me get a different purple out. I had a different purple. I know I did, I just seen it. How frustrating. Oh. What about lemon? Didn't I have? I'm sure I had a purple. I'm going bananas, yeah. Wait a second, guys. I, it's not going to defeat me. No, I didn't have a purple. Oh, my word. Why can't I? Let's see about this red. See if I cut rain. You probably might have to go with red because I can't. For some strange reason, these these wheels. Ah, there we are. The red one works. Woohoo! Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah, and all those that said purple. 
the purple one for some strange reason will not work so i do apologize so i'm gonna go with red and we'll go from there and like i said we'll do these tulips now and then i will come back next week and put it all together and you will see next week what i mean by it can be absolutely anything you want it to be um because i know i'm not going to feed this into one night right let me just thread this because i need the light to do it okay okay right there's our red my gosh the other ones are really driving me nuts right there's the red right let's test on a piece of see what these tulips come around they've come and the red is really standing out i must admit and let me stop it and cut it and that's what the reds look like so always test on a piece of paper a piece of paper a piece of fabric <laughs> piece of paper yeah you can test on a piece of paper if you want <laughs> i mean a piece of fabric um because you know then it's working for your project so what i'm gonna do when i find my chalk is i'm gonna mark out where i want my threads to be i do apologize if i keep moving it and you're dizzy with me so because i want these two lips to stand out i i want them to be how big is that edge i want them to stand off so i'm going to do some here and i'm going to do some there I'm just going to bring them off the um these leaves okay so let me do these ones um there 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 and we have some I've come down there right so there's my where my oh, where i want the tulips goodbye who's going I need to say good. goodbye to all my sweetheart see mama knows best oh god i tell you what these i don't know what's going on with these cottons you know right so I'm just going to pull this section and then I'm going to start doing my tulip. So let's start from this corner. I'm going to pop it down. Bring my needle where, yeah, exactly. I want it to go there. Bring the speed down a minute. That's them there. Could have done with a couple of stitches. them just there so I'm going to do some of you no, my threads not at the back of my work um, I'm 
just following my lines, so to speak. All right, and then I'm going to do, I'll tell you what, even though I've done the tulips, they're not as neat as these flowers. And like I say, I think I just need to practice for them. And what I could do, oh, I've just had an idea. Oh, light bulb moment. <gasps> I've just had a brainwave. Is I could, through the week, when you next see this piece of work, is I could um, hand sew some beads. Some beads on there. Bring that to the back. I'm gonna go just there. So again, I tell you what I am tending to do, and I just noticed it, is as I'm moving the fabric and pinching it together. I'm going to add some seed beads to this. Cut it. And I'm going to do some over here. And then I will show you as I, as I do it. I'm going to read the comments. So... Before I start reading the comments, thank you everybody for stay, staying with me tonight. Honestly, it does mean a great deal to me. And like I say, I would never have had the confidence to do this if it wasn't for you guys and being so supportive. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to um, let you all know what challenges are going on at the moment. So there's my challenge. My challenge is still running for those that want to take part. Um, for that, you all, all I ask is for two flowers and two items to go inside a journal. Mrs. Reeves, Mrs. Reeves, Mrs. G's channel is still running. And um, for those that want to take part in that, um, Sam also has a challenge going on as well. Who is Scotch Crafter? She's got a challenge going on. So if you want to pop on over to her channel. Um, if anybody else knows of any challenges going on, let me know and I'll shout them out. Um, can't think of who else is, who else has got a challenge going on. Is Debbie Vignola's challenge still running? Does anyone know whether that's still running? This is going slow because I want it to go slow. I'm going to do two of you. Um, who else is Rian, the Scottish crafter? Oh, and that's another thing. I'll be, um, I'm signed up for Sam's collab. Rian's fault. <laughs> I'm blaming that one on Rian. Um, she mentioned it to me and I said, oh, I don't understand there, you know. And she said, sign up for it. You're going to love it. So I did. Um, so on Sunday, you will see um, a video. Because every Sunday, every sun second Sunday of the month, we post um, our creation. Now, it could be something I've handmade. So something like a how-to, how I've done it, like like this, 
or it could be something I'm project sharing. So look out for that video because that's coming up on Sunday. So me and Rian are involved in that. It's my dog dreaming. Um, let me, oh, cut it. Oh, did cut. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. What, what else is challenge? Oh, the crafty Sue. Sarah's challenge. Yes, of course. How could I forget Sarah's challenge when I'm entering that? Sarah's shabby sheet creation. She's just asking for um, something that you're inspired by to make. That's all she's asking for. And there's a beautiful story as to why she's running her challenge. And I, well, to say I was touched would be an understatement because it's such a beautiful story. Just cutting these little threads off that I didn't cut off with the cutter. I'm going to do one more, which I can see that I've missed. And then I'm going to show you all what it looks like. Let me read some comments out. Crafty Michelle, yes. Grandma's accessories. I've never heard of them, Sarah, but I'm going to check them out for sure. Um, hi, Jane, sweetheart. Hi, Jane. She pearl and button. Siobhan has a challenge. Oh, oh, cool. I'll definitely check that one out too. Beads would look really pretty. I'm definitely thinking of putting beads on, yeah. So by the time you see it next week, because sea beads will probably take me forever and a day to put on. But um, on when you see this next Friday, I'll be adding some seed beads. So I'm going to show you what we've got so far. I'm going to go down a little bit, I think, for these two lips. Um, yeah, I'm going to add some seed beads to this. I think that would be really pretty to add some seed beads. Okay, right. Are you ready to see it? Right, you ready? No, I've been really quiet tonight. Right, move this out of the way. So we have, let me just show you the pieces we have. We have our back piece, which I didn't go around in pink, but I will do that. Um, I'll do that next week. Or I might actually do it now before we go, before I go off. Just quickly go around the edge in, and then that way I can cut it off, and there's back piece done. So there's our back piece. Our front piece is that we have our uh, we have a circle and we have the warden, and then to finish it off, we have this piece to go on front. So when I come to put in the all these three layers together, this will be on the outside probably can't see it wait a second this will be on the outside so let me move these two pieces and it will look something like that that's what it's going to look like once it's finished um and that way there's going to be a pocket there which i've sewn and there's a little pocket there that you can fit a pencil in lock okay um and then we put the loop on and we're going to go around in a second with some pink stitching um, and for that, I'm going to switch the um, things over. So um, I'll do that with you now. We'll, we're going to go around the back. So then that's the back piece done. And then this is the front piece. So <clears throat> next week, when you see me next week, I will be adding some seed beads to this, to this, to this. And I'm going to be making um, a flower, an embroidered flower. I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to be making some um, flowers as well, embroidered flowers. So, you know, the puffy flowers that I showed you last week or week before, I think it was last week, me and Angie were doing them. These ones, I'm not going to be doing them. Ones. I'm going to do embroidered ones, using, doing, um, showing you how to do it with a spider's web. It looks really complicated, but anyone can do them. And after you've done them, you can cut them out and use them in your projects. So that the next week, we're going to do the embroidered flower for sure. And um, then we'll put all the pieces together. 
so i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut i'm gonna sew there now this back piece um and then that's the yes for tonight but this is the embroidery piece this is what this looks like at the moment so let me just i'm gonna take this off and i'm gonna switch it to the pink I'm gonna oh, show that. Just thread this back through a minute because I've switched it to the pink to do the back piece to finish it off. Like I say, it doesn't mean. Um, oh gosh, it hasn't been so much laughing tonight, but it has been a learning curve. So I threaded that through. Let me get my foot, which is this, and we're going to put the foot back on. And we're just going to do, and I'm not bothered by the stitches being seen, I'm just going to go around the edges. So I've threaded my machine. And I'm going to switch it back to number one. I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to drop that foot because we need to change the feet now. Because that foot is to make the embroidered. This is just a normal standard foot to make our um, standard stitches. So let me... Oops. Right, I'm going to start on the outside because I don't want this pink to be seen. Make sure I don't get that um, pink off the jig. Right, put my needle in. There we are. I'm going to go back. I will speed this up. will see these stitches because they're meant to be seen I don't want them to be hidden I want you to be able to see these stitches so I need to get some more cottons for sure and then we can do some more embroidery with it so next week I'm going to show you how to put the two pieces together and I'm going to show you guys what foot I've learned. We're going to do a foot next week, and I'm going to show you what foot can be learned on any machine. And that way, then, if you've got a machine and you've got the same foot as I, you can practice um, for your own feet. But don't, please don't be fighting with machines, whether you're using a manual, an electric, whatever you're using, please don't be fighting. Just enjoy it. I mean, Gonna stop on me because I can't I couldn't just enjoy it for what it is and if it's a machine that you love using or even if you hand sew as long as you love doing it that's all that matters you could sit there and glue it make one of these and use hot glue gun if you wanted to it just the option is totally there for what you want to do I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to stop in a minute because this lace is gathering a little bit. Pad it out a section. And as you can see, it's going to give me a nice pocket. It's going to not pick a day, it's just going to give me a nice edge, I was going to say. Nice pink edge. That'll be my sewing stuff on the floor. Right, so see, and then get my scissors, and I'm just going to give come on. Let me know whether you've enjoyed this video because sewing, even though it's um, 
takes longer, which it does. I don't know where that, I don't want to cut that string. Wait a second. Fighting with this lace, come on. Come on. My scissors keeps catching in the holes. Come on, come on. There. Woohoo! Right, and that's our back piece done. We take these pins out and not have to worry about it at all. Because that's our back piece done. Doesn't that look pretty with the lace? So that's our back piece done. We're going to do the same with the lace on the front. And that's where our foot piece comes in. And that is where our foot piece is going to sit too. So, yes, I hope you enjoyed. Um, she is going slow. I was going slow, yeah, because I was going round in a circle. I do apologise. It is too slow. Jane, um, it, you can speed it up. I was going slow because I was going around in a circle and I, if I go too quick, I can't keep up where the fabric's going, but you can speed it up. <laughs> you can speed it up. And there's a foot as well with that machine. It's a new machine, which is why I was going slower as well. So I do apologise if, if I've gone too slow tonight. Hi, Tammy, sweetheart. Yes, yeah, slow and sure wins the race for sure. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed collect something different. Thank you, Rian, sweetheart. I've been a machinist. Oh, bless. Well, I really do hope. Thank you, Gillian. I really do hope um, you really enjoyed me showing you a bit of embroidery stitching. I've never done embroidery stitching in all my life. Um, my inspiration, like I say, the links are in the description below. My inspiration came from Sarah. She did a, um, a wall hanger where she layered lace and lace and lace, and it was just beautiful. And Debbie Shaw, Debbie Shaw made one of these projects. And so I took the two videos and I put it into one. Um, so thank you so much for bearing with me tonight. It is definitely been um, one of those that I needed to take my time with, otherwise I would end up completely ruining it. I've been on a lot longer than I would normally as well, so I do apologise for that if I've kept you all up. Um, yeah, and next week I'm going to put it all together and I'm going to decorate this bit and this is where Sarah's video comes in because the bottom bit is where Sarah's video comes in. So I've done a 12, for those who just came in now, it's a 12 inch circle. You can use a circle cutter or a plate size, anything you want, but by the time you bring it in, I mean that's gone, in. it was 12 inches, but the time I brought it in, look, it's now 11 because I've had to bring it in. So I really do hope you really, really enjoyed. I've definitely enjoyed doing that with you tonight. Thank you so much. Truly and honestly, thank you so much. Thank you to all the thumbs up you've given me. Um, I've got nine, that's amazing. I didn't think I would have any tonight. Thank you so much, that means an awful lot. I'd end up stitching my fingers if it went fast. Oh, Sarah, me too. That's why I had to go slow run around, especially me in circles. Never goes. I never do a circle if it doesn't go slow. It's been really fun. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Jane. Enjoyed the stream. Hopefully I can catch you next week. Thank you, River Sweetheart. Thank you to every single one of you that's commented. Give me the thumbs up and um, viewed my video tonight my live i will be back next week for the lovely miss paisley and um i don't know what she's making but she will be back with me next week um yeah i really do hope that you really enjoyed it thank you so so very much with all your nice comments and your nice feedback it just makes um me it makes it enjoyable for me then to be able to show you what i'm doing Oh, never too late, my sweetheart. Never too late to tell me at all. Please come over to our group as well. Um, I'm doing a D stash on Sunday. Um, it's the last D stash. I will be adding some um, pictures up where you can um, 
get have you have the chance but part, the live it'll be the last live this session sunday um i do hope that i've given everybody that's got um challenges a big huge shout out to sarah my sweetheart i haven't forgotten you you were on my list because i'm making things for you at the moment and um good luck with those that have got challenges i hope you have many many more and um yeah lovely thing thank you so so very much can't wait for next week's live thank you julian sweetheart good night god bless love to you all and i will catch up with you all in next week's live bye for now good night god bless